Greetings and welcome everybody to another episode of the Cigar Talk Show. I am joined here by Mark Bose. Say hi, wave. There you Hello. go. Hello. And John Fought. Hi. Two of my cigar buddies, and we are at the Egypt Shrine uh, here. At, it's not technically Riverview, is it? No. So we're off uh, downtown Tampa by maybe just a few blocks, and it is a gorgeous summer afternoon. Uh, so we're just sitting out here on the patio having a smoke on a, on a beautiful day, and uh, we're talking about the cigar life. There's nothing more uh, relaxing than having a happy hour drink with a couple of buddies sitting on a gorgeous porch with a nice cross breeze and some ceiling fans. And uh, this is the good life. This is what it's all about. Mark, give us just a little about you without, uh, you know, your entire profile being <laughs> online uh, that we could look you up. Because nobody wants to look up Mark. I'm just saying, you know, <laughs> you don't want to follow this guy. No, seriously. Mark is actually uh, part of the reason we are here tonight uh, at the Egypt Shrine because uh, Mark's a Shriner. Yes. Uh, and I uh, have to say I'm... Um, I'm really impressed with this facility. It's it's fairly new. How old yeah. now? It's uh, about four years old. And and you've been coming here since you know before. Well, you were a Shriner before this place was yeah. built. That's yeah, yeah. I've, I've been the president of Egypt Shrines Humidor Club for gosh, it's been probably about ten years. Wow. And wow. so we do the fourth Wednesday of every month. We have a smoker out here. Yeah. And it allows we it's open to everybody. And uh, we get a big variety of people come out here, sometimes first-time smokers, sure. sometimes people who are very experienced. Many of the Shriners smoke cigars and enjoy cigars. I can't imagine. So we get a, <laughs> we, we get a, we get a pretty much standard crowd, and we always get the add-in people. And, and one of the things I mentioned was that Mark and I have known each other longer than we've been cigar buddies. Um, when we were both much younger, more uh, handsome men, we... <laughs> We traveled around and, and kind of did the, I would say, the geek talk show circuit. Yeah. Every place we stopped was for uh, some other company, usually like a McAfee or a uh, uh, Gartner. I'm not sure which one. Yeah, we did a lot of them where we just end up at the same place and, and hung out a long time. And, uh, it was basically because he and I have you know, run networks and, and supported technology most of our adult lives. So... I didn't even think at th that time you were smoking cigars. I don't think so. Because I got into it after my son was born, which was not long after we got off the circuit. So neither one of us. And uh, to, to find him at Ash Wednesday was kind of interesting. What uh, What is your favorite environment to smoke uh, a cigar? Is it, is it more out here in the evenings when it's, you know, nice and peaceful or with buddies in a bar? Or, you know, where do you like to go and... All the above. I think it's an all the above <laughs> yeah. because you know we've got, like I said, great venues here in town. Truly. So there's some cigar lounges with the big old leather comfy chairs and you know nice air conditioning, which is kind which of a benefit sometimes. Kind of like that, yeah. And uh, <laughs> for sure, so for sure. we've got some great environments, and you just got to do what where it feels comfortable. I mean, uh, I actually, um, to the vein of my girlfriend, I have a lot of cigars out. In my, sitting in my hot tub with a drink in my hand and the big screen TV in the screen well. room. Yes, sir. That's um, great. I set up a TV off of my patio and I could see from the hot tub it wasn't connected back in that day. And uh, that was the best after dinner, you know, sit in the tub and Relax, turn on some relaxing nice beyond belief. And, yeah, yeah, exactly. Maybe a little candlelight. My wife, thankfully, is not anti-cigar. Um, being a registered nurse, I kind of figured that was you know a big hurdle but now she said it's you know they, they don't really frown upon it the way they do cigarettes because it's a whole different experience and I, we've talked about that before on the well, show but. most most lounges uh kind of have a standing rule that inside cigar cigarettes are not really allowed because they the aroma and the harshness of that grade of tobacco uh, is not really conducive to the environment they're trying to promote. Aroma is a big factor, yeah. And uh, and it is with cigars, the aroma. It's like pipe smoke. There's aroma. Sure, there's yeah. a there, there's a there's that there's uh, that the ambiance that, that, that they try and create there. And cigarettes just kind of yeah, vaping as well. Most shops won't let it, somebody yeah, vape inside true. the shop. That's true. I hate it when the vape shop promotes premium cigars and they have that out on their sign. And I go in and it's a big vape shop or something. It's like. You're not a cigar lounge. 
No. That is a big, different environment and altogether. I think they, socially that's important. They enough. might have some acid cigars and right, stuff like right, that. Right, right, right. Flavors yeah. that I'm not fond of, actually. But right. there's, a, there's a difference to flavored cigars and the acids and then some of the dipped cigars. You, you mentioned Baccarat earlier, Mark. That's It has a tinge of sweetness on the tip, but it is not a, a dipped or a flavored cigar. It mm-hmm. still is all about the tobacco, and I think... Uh, you know, you'll agree that, that yes. you can smell the grape tobacco from the uh, yeah. blunts and all that crap, and it's just not appealing to me at all. No, uh, I, I'm pretty much a, a hand rolled um, traditional cigar smoker. And years ago, one of my buddies who was running a cigar shop said, "John, John, you got to try this new cigar." It, it came in, yeah. and it was a um, it was a Java. Oh yeah, yeah. And uh, by Drew Estates. True. Sure. And uh, it has a mocha coffee infused situation and the, and they also make, make ones called Tobacco Special mm-hmm. um, the cafes from yes. Nub also have those a nice so there's a couple though. of different ones that have that chocolate really have a chocolate uh, 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 mocha yeah. uh, flavoring to them and aroma and they're very pleasant especially in the morning when you're ha- you're sitting with your maybe your newspaper if you still have a Hard copy newspaper, your cup of coffee. You're, you're showing out. your age uh, there, yeah. John. I, yeah. I don't even know if I get I could get one delivered anymore. <laughs> but uh, if you're out there reading on your iPad or your mm-hmm. or like that, and yeah. you're reading the newspaper, right, right, and you've got your cup of coffee going, they really go well with it, and they're very very tasty, and they come in different sizes. So if you're if you need a shorter smoke, you've got like a half hour to 45 minutes. If you want something that's an hour, yeah. you can get the different because most most cigars. In a line come in several different shot sizes, not only in length but in girth. And in mm-hmm. girth, we talk about it. We, it's called gauge. Ring gauge, yeah. Ring gauge. Yeah. And uh, uh, you can it dep- And a lot of people smoke in different ways. There are people who consume real fast. Yeah. Puff, and there are other people that enjoy it and mellow out and take a usually a puff about once a minute or two. Uh, good. Good you, point. Yeah. Usually, we'll make sure that the cigar does not burn hot. And which it, which can affect the overall flavor and, and the your draw experience and your experience with it heats it. up the cigar to where that flavor permeates the rest of the tobacco. Mm-hmm. It's definitely mm-hmm. you don't want to do that if you intend on smoking it again later. Yep. Now here's here's the thing that I found from Cigar Aficionado years ago, mm. and it's called the three match method. Okay. The long cigar matches that we you sure. occasionally on, yep. you know, about three inches, three and a half inches. If you take three of those, set them down. And you know you've got a cigar that you you regularly smoke, and yeah. it's something that you really enjoy. Yeah, yeah. And you and you know what to expect. You light it, you cut it, you light it. And you know. This one, the, the, what they did is they did this. They took the cigar out. They didn't cut it yet. Mm-hmm. Strike the match. Make sure that the sulfur's done, and toast the foot. There you go. Toast the foot all the way down. Put it down in the ashtray. Striking it. By the third one, you've got it very well toasted. Then you cut. And then you do a draw. Really? And you, you will find that the cigar that you normally know the flavor profile of and what you're expecting is slightly different and better. You're going to enjoy it more. Yeah. And it's called the three match method. I'll have, and to, I, I'll have to put a link up if it's still out there. That's something I had not heard. I've been and, smoking uh, almost 30 years. And it's, uh, it, I didn't believe it at first. I thought, yeah, right. Yeah, sure. So <laughs> I tried it and I said, darn, that really works. Yeah. And it yeah. does. But uh, what you're doing is you're toasting the cigar uh, foot very well and making sure that it's lit all the way around and that the the the, the um, outside wrapper is married to the rest of the cigar all yeah, the way around yeah. so that you're not going to uh, have a, an air an air pocket where you're drawing and it's going to shovel or something. But um, shoveling a, 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 or canoeing is yeah. is an interesting problem because it can be the tobacco that caused that problem, but oftentimes it's the way it was lit. Right. If the tobacco is inconsistent or there's a, like you mentioned, a pocket or something, you'll see the, the draw is not even, and it, it has a little slice that's starting to bring that uh, fire up further than the rest of the of the, uh, the foot of the cigar there. So right. big and deal it, that, it, that, you know, it can that also, they it, that. It can also uh, encourage the cigar to split. Mm-hmm. And so those of you Which smokers... Which is unpleasant. Yeah, so those of you uh, cigar smokers who, uh, you know, bought a nice cigar... And you put you know more than maybe fifteen dollars into the cigar, and yeah. it starts to split on you. It, it's really uh, disappointing. It's disappointing <laughs> and, and, and aggravating. Mark, but, uh, I, I'm ahead. sorry. I, I wanted to ask you. And look at that ash. If you, I'm sure you can see that now. Mark is a, a, a master of the ash. I've seen him do this on more than one occasion, where you have a nice long, and you keep it without knocking it off. 
I know if there's there's something satisfying about that, but I think it's more aesthetics. Um, yeah, I usually don't don't keep them this long. It just it's a long reach. To the it's a long reach to the ashtray. Here, I'll, I'll move that for you. We'll get the all the junk out of your. <laughs> that being said, <laughs> Mark has his own cutter. He brings with him. It's a deep V cut. John uh, educated us earlier on the idea of the foot and, and taking just the, uh, the tip of that cigar off uh, from the uh, above the shoulder. But Mark had a really deep V cut, and I have a small one. I understand why you do that, and and I want you to educate us on that uh, cut particular. I found that, and this is what I've been told on it, and I found it pretty much be true. First off, you control the cut, so yeah. you're not going to cut the cap off. Right. But also, it allows you to have a bigger, okay, say cubic inch, cubic centimeter, however uh-huh. you want to measure it. Right. But the air that's exposed that you're drawing the smoke more through, the flavor through, and, yeah. is bigger. Therefore, it's more of a gentle draw. Yes. Like, well, some people do a punch. I don't like a punch because you see that people that do punches tend to suck on their cigars. Right, right. I did that for years and years thinking it was better. Yeah. Somebody gave me a nice deep V cut, and I, man, it's it, it's amazing how that little adjustment makes such a huge difference in the draw, the, draw, the flavor, flavor, and the consistency of that smoke. And and it, it was really interesting because I'm sitting with two guys that are loyalists to their cut, and that was I I, I know you have a really nice uh, a cutter too, and I I buy the cheap ones because I tend to leave them places, but. You know, when I get a nice deep, deep V cut, I notice the cigar tastes different. Well, even on like a torpedo, I'll often, like if you're in a shop and they t- tend cut to want to cut yeah. it for you, yeah. and I'll tell them, just do a guillotine, but at a 30 degree angle. Ah. And they'll kind of look at you funny because, <laughs> again, by by changing the angle, yeah. it allows a larger draw surface. Right. And that way you don't have to suck on the cigar. Yeah. It keeps the taste profile a little more consistent I and think. you're not tending to overheat it yeah because if you're sucking and drawing and hard and pulling on it you're actually creating more airflow mm-hmm. which ignites more tobacco yeah. and that can be you know uh, detrimental to the flavor you know and then it's people are all about shapes and sizes and stuff like this like i prefer i prefer a torpedo but my favorite is a box press torpedo oh interesting i, okay. I just find that i enjoy them more right on dig it um, a little harder to find they so, are. I, I, I can think of one or two off the top of my head, and for the yeah. life of me, I wouldn't be able to name a brand, but I, I bought a, a, a bundle of, of samplers. Mm-hmm. Like Oliva does that sometimes, and we'll, we'll put links at the end of the show. Uh, cigar page, we talked about earlier. We talked about cigarbid.com, and they are owned by uh, major cigar outlets, and they get tons and tons of samples and additional cigars when they buy big orders. And sometimes you'll have a five-pack of mixed-up cigars or a ten-pack of, of a particular brand. And, you know, Oliva has one of my favorite torpedoes. And it is just the perfect shape. It's the perfect length for the time. And I'm, I'm generally not a guillotine cut guy, but I'm going to try that 30-degree thing. That's interesting. Yeah, because it increases the surface here yeah. that you're drawing through. That's so cool. Again, well, 30 years, and I'm still learning cigars. You know? Well, most house cuts are traditionally a V-cut. That's true. And uh, so when, when uh, the owner of a cigar shop or something like that asks you if you want it cut, usually you can tell them what kind of cut you want. True. Uh, usually most of them will have uh, not only the guillotine but the V cut. Yeah. And uh, sometimes they even have the cigar scissors, the shears. Which I will, I will put a picture up right now because I don't have my bag with me, but I had a really nice pair of gold-plated scissors. And I hated them. I thought they were the coolest looking things, but they're really not great for a guillotine style cut. You know, no, that's a much no. better idea. Now, double guillotine, totally a different animal. Yes. Um, cutting a cigar, as you said, it, it, it changes the, the flavor. It can change the flavor profile because mm-hmm. it changes the burn rate because of the draw. Right. And uh, it also uh, changes how much smoke you're getting on your palate, which is where we're really getting the enjoyment from. From the cigar, the, not only the aroma, but the um, the flavor on your palate, yes. on your tongue, and uh, so so the cut of the cigar makes a big difference. Yeah. And as you smoke cigars, you will find out which one works best for you, and what works best for you on different kinds of cigars. Like yeah. Mark said, with a torpedo in, right, right. Yes. Uh, some people like to do the V cut on a torpedo uh, because there's 
more of the more of the uh, the cap is coming down That's further true. on the yeah. cigar, so you have more. And it's area. reaching more of that filler too, and, right. and that deeper cut for the filler. Uh, I think, you know, you, you see these unusual rolls sometimes where it's all Maduro wrapper mm-hmm. and filler and binder, and the, you know those three types of tobaccos generally are a little different, and they t- they can change the profile. But having something that you know is super powerful flavor for whatever. Uh, your deeper V cut is going to give you more of that, and it may be overpowered. I mean, I've had people like you mentioned earlier. If, if they're a novice smoker, or you know, their palate's not as developed, you know, you have to acquire your own taste. So don't be afraid to experiment. That's one thing. But ask your tobacconist. Ask your, you know, the people around you. Don't be afraid. We're all friendly. I've never once had an argument with somebody over the type of cigar that they're smoking or what their brand was. I'm not a brand loyalist. I hate to say it. A lot of the fellows that, uh, a lot of the people, not fellows, a lot of the people that run <laughs> cigar stores mm-hmm. have uh, some sort of uh, tobacconist training. Right. And there, is a, there are courses that they go through to learn the different kinds of tobacco mm-hmm. and to learn the flavor profiles. Because, like you said, we have Maduro, then we have Connecticut, mm-hmm. and then on the other extreme, we have Lajero. Yes. Which is a very, very strong um, wrapper, and uh, you get to the. Uh, uh, LFD's uh, oh, yeah. uh, uh, Double La Heros, Double Heros yeah. uh, and they're a very strong cigar. They are. So um, if you happen to be getting a cigar and somebody offers you one, it's, it's, it's a nice gesture on their part, and accepting it, of course, is, is up to you. But uh, be careful if you're not an experienced uh, cigar smoker because yeah. that might be more powerful than you're expecting truly yeah yeah and and then then you light that up and you get into a few puffs and it overpowers you and in you it ruins your experience and if you're if you're kind of a novice starting out it might it might sour your uh, your, your enjoyment, enjoyment going enjoyment forward yeah going right. forward. mark let me ask you one because uh i, I love to, to hear what people think i noticed you brought your own cup what is your favorite beverage, or is there one? Do you have a different uh, cigar, a pairing with a beverage, or do you just drink what you're drinking and have a cigar with it? Depends a little bit where I'm at. Like if, if I'm at home a lot of times, it'll be a scotch or a bourbon, single cube. Nice. Something you can just sit back and enjoy long term. Sure. If you're out in a more social aspect, it's a little harder to do those sometimes yeah, and, yeah. and get the same enjoyment. <clears throat> like uh, tonight is Basil Hayden. <laughs> But um, you're fortunate that you could bring your own beverage here and, and enjoy it. So. No, I got it from the bar. Oh, did you? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Even better. So we got the good you stuff here, too. Bring your own cup. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm going to remember that. Well, I, I, I do that because I drink slowly as I'm smoking a cigar. That's, that's important so to note the, the note metal well. insulated cups mean that, being that we're outside and it's probably mid to upper 80s at e- the moment. Easily at this point. This is staying cold for the hour, roughly, that it's going to take to smoke the cigar. Right on. John, is there a particular uh, beverage for you? Uh, in the mornings, I usually like a coffee, yes. a nice, strong coffee. Yes. Um, but uh, in the evenings, I'll usually do a, a, a gin and tonic or oh, a, yeah. a rum and good coke. Oh, yeah, good call. A gin and tonic or a rum and coke. And uh, a good gin and tonic, to me, is kind of a good counterpoint to the flavor I'm getting off a cigar. Right, right. And it also cleans the palate a little yes, bit. Yes, it does. Yeah. So you, 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 you get that and you switch it around and it kind of cleans the palate. And then when you take the next draw in off your cigar, you're you're tasting the cigar a little bit, bit, bit more. A little more. Rum right. doesn't necessarily do that, but... Yeah, rum can be overpowering depending on the rum. But if it's with a Coke, then you know it's a pretty sweet experience and pretty yeah. mellow it out. You know, I like that uh, idea also if you have a stronger flavored cigar that you pair that with something a little sweeter. Um, I'm a big fan of a uh, nice old fashioned uh-huh. uh, if you're going to do an evening beverage, but Excellent I started choice. with gin and tonic. Yes. That was my, my beverage of choice. And then uh, the wife would come home from work. We have coffee when she gets home about three o'clock, and that became my go to. A good strong cup of coffee with a cigar for me is one of the perfect pairings with it. Yeah, well, and wonderful. even though it's a hot beverage. Yeah, um, that's, that's a whole other experience. Yeah, too. even though it's, and it's a hot beverage rather than a, one that was ice and, and mm-hmm. cool and like that. And uh, I know a lot of guys that, uh, one of my good friends, uh, Mark, another Mark, uh, he enjoys bourbon. Nice. And, and, he, and he usually smokes his cigars with a nice bourbon. Yeah, sure. And so uh, it comes down to your own individual taste and your experience with different cigars. If you have a cigar that you know has a certain flavor profile, 
um, whether you know whatever it is, yeah. you know what usually goes best with it for you. That's so, so true. Good point. Yeah, so it's a very individualized thing. But uh, the big thing is to be able to have something that, that doesn't take away from the su- experience of smoking the cigar. It should be and, all and about should... the enjoyment and the relaxation. It shouldn't be a, a stressful decision or experience. I totally agree. One of the things that I've always recommended to people, and many cigar shops do mm. this, they'll have a pairing of an alcohol yes. with cigars. And I happen to be at one that the, the Fuentes put on. They had Ashton cigars there. Nice. And they had it with scotch. They had three different cigars. That's, I remember that, And then yeah. three different scotches. Yes. And it's it's amazing because they have the experience of obviously what goes what well goes with, with one another. Right, right. Yeah. So almost all the shops, um, Corona does them monthly mm-hmm. and stuff, where you can go in there and... Uh, some people might get scared. Oh, it's a fifty dollars pairing or whatever. <laughs> whatever. Um, you, only, but, you only live once. Well, enjoy and, and, it. And they're going to say, "Okay, this cigar. Try it with this. Yeah. It's, it's wonderful. It's yeah. way different. Like they'll do a light scotch with a lighter, milder cigar, yes. and then they'll move you up the scale. And it's amazing the difference when you pair it with with the right drink. Totally, yes. totally agree. Totally different experience. Yes, it is. Gentlemen, I'm going to wrap things up here and say I really appreciate your time. John, thank you for coming out, sir. Thank you. Mark, always a pleasure. And we're going to encourage you now to take a moment, look around the site. Uh, We have some new features, including this brand new Cigar Talk newsletter. Please check that out. Subscribe below. We'll give you a couple of little bonuses to go with that. And uh, we're going to do another uh, episode at J.C. Newman coming up real soon. So thanks for watching, everybody. This is Chuck. Enjoy. Enjoy.